This is not a complete history of Plumsteadville, but it is a story of Plumsteadville using pictures that my father and myself have taken since about 1920. Long before the revolution, there was a small hamlet here made up of a tavern and a few scattered houses. It was first known as Hart's Tavern, and since that time has been known as Rod Rocks, as Fisherville, and then again as Plumstead, and the Plumsteadville was tacked on in 1846. George Helrick was the owner of the hotel when I was growing up, but later he sold it, and in 1964 the building was nearly lost. There was a fire in it, and after sitting unrepaired for a few years, it was restored and became the Plumsteadville Inn. The 1751 on the sign indicates that they believe that is the date the original building was built. Some new additions have been put on and it is now known as Widow Brown's Inn. In this picture, probably taken about 1920, we see the buildings just north of the hotel, including Frank Hinkle's Tinsmith shop. Here we see Frank Hinkle busy making some of his tin products. On the second floor of this building was the telephone office of the Plumstead Rural Telephone Company. I have a constitution and bylaws of this company dated 1910. This was owned by the stockholders of the company. My grandfather used to climb the poles and do the troubleshooting when necessary. This building is now an antique shop next to the Plumsteadville Inn. After the rural lines were taken over by Bell Telephone, there was no telephone exchange in Plumsteadville for a number of years. But in the late 1930s, Bell Telephone built this new exchange on Stump Road. As the area grew, the need for a larger telephone office became apparent. A new one was built next door. And now we have this present telephone office. This building was originally a Presbyterian church built around 1860. The cemetery that belonged to this church still remains on Keller's Church Road, but the church died out and the Keller Glove Company moved in from across the street. This picture must have been taken about 1910. After operating in the old building for a long time, Keller's built this new building on Route 611 just south of Plumsteadville. Keller's went out of business in the early 1980s and the building is now the home of Malmark. They make handbells for church choirs. This is the handbell choir of the Doylestown Mennonite Church. They use Malmark bells. Next to the old church building was this garage run by Jake Gilbert about 1920. He did general repairs on automobiles. You can also see on the right the trolley tracks which ran through the village at that time. The trolley ran from Doylestown to Easton. This building at Schuster Brothers Auto Body Shop was the trolley station. The trolley barns were located behind this building and the trolleys were kept here overnight. Gilbert's garage went out of business and Keller Glove Company took over the building for a garage for their truck. In this picture, people are lined up to buy nylons at the end of World War II, about 1946. Plumsteadville Fire Company was organized in 1930 this Hahn truck was delivered in 1931. The first chief, Robert Schleicher, is at the wheel. The first firehouse was on the Walter Rush property. This was a new truck delivered to Plumstedville Fire Company in 1955. And this is the latest pumper which we housed in 1993. The company now also has this rescue truck fully equipped for all emergencies. This 1941 Chrysler was Plumsteadville's first ambulance. Ambulance service was started in 1956 when Dublin Fire Company donated this ambulance to us. 
We soon got a more modern ambulance. This Cadillac was one which we have had. And now we have these modular type ambulances. Down Keller's Church Road was the Plumsteadville Creamery. This was a cooperative owned by the local farmers. Local farmers brought their milk here to be processed into butter and cheese. The creamery ceased to operate and the house part was rented out. The Ruppert family lived here for a long time. It was bought by Harold Myers and the place became Myers's Foods. They make chicken, beef, and oyster pies and now have added quite a number of new products. It's been recently acquired by Hanover Foods. This was the Plumsteadville School. It had two rooms, which was one more than any other school in the township. Plumstead Township had eight schools. In 1960, we built a consolidated school. This old building became the township building, housing the police department and township offices. There were no school buses at that time, so we walked to school. On days like this, we stayed home. The township is now building a larger township building, keeping the old schoolhouse intact as part of the building. Most of the other schoolhouses were turned into houses. This one had been the Valley Park School. And this is Gaiman Elementary School, which was built to replace the eight schools. It is now a part of the Central Buck School District. This picture was taken in 1991 and shows the flag flown at half mast in honor of Senator John Hyens, who had just been killed in an airplane accident. We also now have another school in Plumsteadville, the Plumsted Christian School. This is a private school and parents must pay to send their children here if they choose to do that. On the left, barely visible, is the Plumstead Township Road Equipment Garage as it used to be. Stump Road is a state road, but the township would open it up to 611 so that they could get to their roads. Often the state roads got plowed last. The township has now built this new, larger equipment building. On the corner of 611 and Stump Road, as I was growing up, was the Filer residence. They lived there a long time, but eventually had a sale and moved away. Eventually, this house would be one of those buildings which would be torn down to make way for a shopping center. Also needing to come down was the former Carl Betts house. Mr. Betts ran a Sunoco gas station and garage and was one of the charter members of the fire company. Here he is in the middle in this picture. Darwin Neese, another charter member, is on the right. The Betts house and garage were later bought by Bob Schumacher. He also operated a garage. In this picture, the bulldozers are at work tearing these houses down. Aaron Kratz had a carriage factory in Plumsteadville from 1857 to 1911. It was located on Stump Road just west of 611. He manufactured wagons and sleighs. Mr. Kratz was one of those who backed the building of a trolley line from Easton to Doylestown and was the first person to pay the nickel fare for the 32 mile ride when it was finished. This is Aaron Kratz in front of the, one of the houses he had built. He had these big houses along Stump Road built to house some of his employees. Kratz has also had a warehouse where the present Grange Hall stands. The Grange has been an important part of the community. When everyone had horses, Kramer's blacksmith shop did mostly horseshoeing. But here they are putting a steel rim on a wagon wheel. Twin sons, Ralph and Roland are helping Howard Kramer. The rim is heated on the fire. Then it is slipped over the wheel and cold water is poured on to shrink it tight over the wheel. Here we get an inside view of the blacksmith's shop. With not too many horses around, they switch to making farm wagons. Charlie Snyder did the carpenter work for Howard. 
And here we have a good picture of the forge. In this picture, the blacksmith shop is being torn down. The new telephone office now occupies this site. Here we see Eli Myers at work in his harness shop on Stump Road. With everyone switching to automobiles, this business faded out also. In the 1930s and 1940s, Walter Metzger was our barber. He also had a little store along with the barber shop. As you can see by the sign, soft drinks were only five cents. After this no was no longer a barber shop, Nick Younger operated a real estate office from this building. Although Plumsteadville didn't have a mayor, he was often referred to as the mayor of Plumsteadville. You can also see a Westinghouse sign in front of the old glove factory. That's because Irv Helrich now owned the building and ran an electrical business from here. Some of his trucks are covered with snow. Across from the hotel was the Plumsteadville General Store. I remember when Dan Weigold had it, but Pax Bishop had it for most of the years that I remember. The Plumstonville Post Office was also located here. This is an inside view of the store and post office. Left to right, we see Butch Krauthummel, Jane Bishop, Pax Bishop, and Pat Leatherman. There were less than 100 mailboxes then. On snowy days, businesses had to provide parking for customers. Here Lester Gross is plowing snow at the store in 1947. You could also buy merchandise from these peddlers who went from door to door. This one is named Stricker. Here he is at Howard Kramer's either to sell something or to have his horse shoot. This is another peddler named Goldberg who used to be in our area. Eventually, a small shopping center was built just south of Plumsteadville and the grocery store and post office moved there about 1963. Plumsteadville post office now has more than 1,200 mailboxes. This shopping center has been enlarged and now looks like this. Steve Daniel is now our barber in this shopping center. Later, a larger shopping center was built and Stewart's Supermarket was opened. Stewart's closed in a few years and the market was reopened as a Clemens store. They had their opening in 1991 and the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile was on hand for the occasion. We now have two drugstores in town, the Thrift Drugstore pictured here and the Village Pharmacy. Another small business we had for a while was Maxi's Provincials. They held classes for people who wanted to learn to do decorative painting. This is some of the work they did. They also sold these items in their store. Frank Hinkle made some of the tinware that they decorated. Since the 1920s, Haycock's Sawmill has been operating in Plumsteadville. Claude Haycock operates the saw probably about 1950. They have much more modern equipment today. Haycocks used to have their own crew to cut down the trees. Here Ralph and Ammon Moyer are cutting down a tree. And there it goes. And then it is loaded on Amstead's truck to be hauled back to Plumsteadville. Although there are no longer any churches in the village, there are two churches nearby. Here we see Grace Gospel Chapel on 611, just south of the village. The newest church is also on 611, Christ Community Church. George Helrick used to say that winter isn't over until Stump Road has been blown shut. Here it is closed out by Eli Myers' farm. It seems as though we used to get more snow than we do now. It often took a lot of equipment to open Stump Road. And this is how Keller's Church Road looked after a storm in 1950. 
After these storms, Route 611 was usually kept open, but the side roads usually had to wait for a while. The farmers tried to get their milk out to Plumstedville by tractor or horse-drawn wagons, and the milk trucks would meet them there. Ice storms caused problems for the telephone company. After an ice storm, you would see a lot of repair trucks at the telephone office. Farming decreased as an occupation in the area. This farm sale was my grandfather's on German Road. This is that same land a few, few years later. The road was paved and now there are houses built there. Things kept changing in the whole area. This was our courthouse in Doylestown. To make room for this bigger, modern, courthouse, the old one had to be torn down. The county jail in Doylestown has also been replaced by a newer facility. This old one has been made into an art center. This is a Smith Dairy Farm in 1946. On this site now sits the Doylestown Shopping Center, and it's hard to imagine it once looked like this. These old buildings at the hotel once were very important buildings. The two-story building had stables for horses downstairs and a stage and auditorium upstairs. The three-story building had carriage garages downstairs and the upper floors were meeting rooms for lodges. During the years that the Aaron Kratz Wagon Factory was in town, a lot of public functions took place in these buildings. I don't know what year they were torn down. Judging by the cars in the picture, it could have been in the late 1940s. This was another landmark lost to change, but it had deteriorated so much that it was an improvement to see it go. This is looking east on Stump Road in springtime, and this is the same scene in the wintertime. This building next to the hotel was the doctor's office while I was growing up. I remember Drs. Brewer, Dr. Ward, and Dr. Burmeister practicing here. And now we have a newer, larger medical practice along Route 611. To see a professional baseball game, we needed to go to Philadelphia. In this picture, the Philly fanatic is entertaining the fans. Here Pete Rose is at bat. This was August 10, 1981, when Pete got lifetime hit number 3,631, breaking Stan Musial's record. But we did not have to go to Philadelphia to see a baseball game. In the late 1930s and 40s, Plumstedville had a team in the Bucks County League. We also had the Plumstedville Boys Club baseball team. This was before the women's liberation movement, but we had a girl player named Josephine Brooker. Here she is safe at first base. Here another farm is being sold out. Irvin Yeathers is the auctioneer. This was the Sam Miller farm between Plumstedville and Dublin. This was Turkey Haven in the 1950s and 60s on Stump Road. Turkeys are no longer grown here, but the building is now an apartment building. Here are some of the turkeys that were grown there. In 1953, farmer John Bollinger had a fire at his cannery. This building was the original Keller Glove factory before they moved into the old church building. Dublin's chief car and a Dublin pumper are shown as they came to assist. This was Frank Hinkle's barn. After John Bollinger's property burned, he bought this property and moved his cannery next door to where it had been before. In 1986, this building then belonged to Widow Brown's Inn. This building that had been spared three, 33 years earlier was badly damaged by a fire. The snorkel equipment, not available 33 years ago, made the job easier this time. After the fire company moved out of its old firehouse, it moved into this one, which was new in 1940. 
After several additions to the old firehouse, a new fire station was built. Here we have a picture of Plumpsville's first three fire chiefs. From left to right, Robert Schleicher, Walter Rush, and Ray Myers. District Fire Marshal Jack Federoff is on the right. The old building is used for banquets and meetings, and the new building, now known as Station 24 in the Bucks County Network, houses the trucks. At one time, we had a bakery in Plumsteadville. I remember it as Zeke's Bakery. It was also Hendrickson's Bakery and Gummel's Bakery. It's now been demolished and the township owns the property. The Bucks County Bank bought the old rabbit farm. The fire company had some drills there and the building was removed. One of the things that used to happen in our community was when a neighbor had a misfortune, everyone had time to help him recover. This is a barn raising at the Paul Myers farm on Valley Park Road in 1954. And this was at the Raymond Gross Farm in, on Herring Road in 1958. This barn was partially destroyed by fire. In 1974, sewers were put through Plumsteadville. This would open up the area for development. An industrial park was developed on the Pat Leatherman Farm. Now one of the largest employers in the area is Scott Specialty Gases. Here we see the buildings all torn down for the new shopping center. Gone are the Filer House, the Schumacher House, and the Jeremiah Real Estate Office. Here we have another view of the preparation for building. And here we have a view from the finished construction site. Of course, the added traffic from the shopping center made it necessary for a traffic light at the intersection of Stump Road and 611. Another new look in town is the former glove factory, which is now known as Plumstead Village Professional Building. Looking south from the Plumsteadville Cemetery, we see wheat fields that belong to the Raymond Rush and the Will Rush farms. Plans are approved to put several hundred houses on this land. Raymond Rush is shown combining wheat a few years ago in his fields. But there will be no more wheat harvested here. His farm is being developed as cabin-run estates. There has been slow change in the Plumsteville area in the past, but now the area is very rapidly being transformed from a rural community into a sub